Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So I'm gonna be showing you guys something really quickly. So let me go grab it. Here are some stickers. And here is today's kind of like main show for today. So as you guys can probably tell from the title of the video, you probably know what the left uh, products are. Um, there's probably nothing really to hide, but um, with the help of GSJJ, which is a manufacturing company that specializes in enamel pins, um, as well as stickers, I believe they do lanyards, patches, there's like a bunch of different things that they do. But let me show you guys off these stuff right like really quickly. So we have stickers right here, I have Masaki stickers, both kiss cut and die cut. And then here we have two designs of pins. You guys can kind of see like a little sneak peek of what those are. So here they are. So before we kind of get a closer look at each individual product, I wanted to show you guys the website really quickly. So GSJJ actually does like a bunch of different products such as enamel pins. I believe they also do patches as well as uh, lanyards and stickers and there's a bunch of other things that they have as well but first of all let's take a look at their enamel pins so they have no minimum quantity limit which is really nice especially if you just want to test out uh, making an animal in an an enamel pin that's hard for me to say for some reason there's two different kinds like hard enamel pin and soft enamel today we'll be looking mostly at the hard enamel pins is that's what i received they also have different add-ons and finishes you can see for your enamel pins as well as the plating. I believe mine are copper, I think. I think that's what it is, the copper one. Kind of like the rose goldy color and you can have different clasps or the packaging customized to your liking. So yeah, they also have a video on how the enamel pin is actually made and some other options down here as well as the commonly asked questions right at the bottom. So next up we have their interface or their website that they use to help you make your designs. So they do have a bunch of different assets on there as well that they already have that you can use to make your pins or your stickers. Um, but you can also import like what I'm doing of my design of Masaki and if you have any issues you can definitely contact their staff and they can help you with any design issues or just any general um, troubleshooting for making your design work for a pin. So next up is the stickers. So for the stickers, they have a bunch of different options as well. Um, I got both the kiss cut and the die cut and I've used like um, a new uh, illustration and then an old illustration, but you guys can see the different ones that they have and kind of like the different finishes for different purposes for your sticker or like if you just prefer like glossy or like different kind of application for them for like mailing or if you want to put it on like glass and stuff there's a bunch of different ones holographic fluorescent craft paper there's like a bunch of different ones so if you decide to go get pins you can also decide to get some stickers along with it this is the perfect place to go to because their quality is really nice and this is my first time making enamel pins and i'm actually fairly surprised with the amount of um or I guess like the lack of errors in the enamel pins. We'll get into that in a little bit. So let's talk about the stickers first. So you can see they're really glossy, first of all. And you can see that the first one with the green background is actually a kiss cut sticker. So the paper is not cut all the way through and um, you kind of have to peel it away from the surface. And then the one of Masaki is more kind of like a die cut. And or I guess both of them are masaki. So the big one, this one, has a cut at the back or a slit so that you can easily peel it away, which is really nice. It makes it a lot easier for you to apply it to certain surfaces rather than ruining the sticker by clawing at the corner or however you would like to. So I'm just doing a test and basically putting it into my sketchbook. The adhesive is super strong on these, by the way. I was going to like reposition it, but uh, the sticker already really adhered to the paper, so I didn't really want to rip it. And you can see how the how easy the kiss cut stickers come off, which is really nice. And I just really like how glossy these are. It's like a really nice finish to it. It feels really high quality, and I feel like it doesn't get scratched easily or anything like that. So I feel like you don't have to really worry about the surface getting scratched or damaged or like the ink coming off or anything like that. So yeah 
consistent like consistency among all the stickers is also great as well so yeah i think also color accuracy is to my liking it is a little bit more darker and it's slightly more saturated than my files but i feel like that's a little bit to be expected um and here are the enamel pins so like i said i kind of have this kind of coppery uh, plating for it so the outlines are kind of the same color of that and then the rest is the other kind of enamel parts so you can see that I chose kind of more of a simple design I wanted to keep the color palette very minimal and I actually really like how it looks like this and I was actually surprised about the amount of detail they were able to get because um, I was very confused which is why it's great to talk to your rep about this as well if you have any questions about um how to make your pin or the amount of detail and stuff because I initially had the sparkles in his hair as highlights as just like no outline but they suggested that I should put an outline and I actually really like it with the outlined uh, look because it kind of makes it really stand out and I'm sure it has something to do with the process as well but yeah so I have Maseki and then I have another one of Nahida you can see that the finish is super shiny it's also just like one flat surface I believe soft enamel has more like divots and like dips into it but this one has like a more consistent finish all the way across very even and yeah i think they turned out really cute you can see how really reflective and shiny they are i just really love these these are super pretty like i said this is like my first time making pins ever so seeing my designs come to life through pins is really cool on the back there's a little logo of the gs jj logo as well as the little clasp at the back or i think it's like a similar to like a rubber clutch i think that's what it's called for the back so yeah and then here i'm actually going to take my time to actually look for imperfections and stuff because a lot of people when they make uh, enamel pins you do pin grading so pin grading is usually um you kind of have like a scale between a grades to i don't even know how d grades maybe so a grade meaning that they're basically perfect you can see this one has a very small little uh, mark on his face and I was trying my best to see if I could scratch it off or wipe it off and it did not come off so you know some people might consider this still an A grade some people might consider it into like a B grade for now I kept it in a B grade pile even though the kind of error or mistake or like the little flaw of it, it's very minimal so I basically had an A pile and a B pile just to keep them separate and I was trying to do my best to uh do a quick run through because I didn't want to spend too much time doing sorting. I'll do like probably two batches or not two batches, two phases of this. So I will do a one look at them while they're in the bag to see if there's any major issues and then I'll set that aside. And then I'll do a second one where I'll actually open up the plastic and take a furrow look and do a little bit of cleaning or scrubbing to make sure that it's not just like lint or something in the bag um, creating a mark on the pin. So for the most part, I believe, um, was I given 50? I'm not too sure. I might have to double check. I'll put the number on the screen, but I believe for Maseki, I only had five that had a little speck. Um, like I said, some people might regard that as an A, some people might regard that as a B. I don't find it too much of an issue, but um, I'll probably technically make that my B pile. And then for Nahida's, I think I had about six um, with some kind of very small error, which is very similar. It's like just a dock or like a dot or a speck on top of the plating or something like that. So yeah, uh, I'll do a more thorough uh, grading of each of the pins, but I used to watch a lot of like Bailey J's videos and she does a lot of pin grading. So that's kind of where my knowledge comes from. But I'm trying to show you guys not in the best lighting i realized but yeah here is the my digital drawings versus the printed version of the stickers They're, the color is actually fairly accurate it is like i said a little bit darker and a little bit more saturated but like i said i don't really mind it too much it doesn't look off or anything and i feel like it's probably like that as well because of how glossy it is but um I wanted to show you guys a little bit of the process of the drawing. So I did a few versions of the pins that I potentially could have done. So I did um, Masaki in the pot as well as like the side profile. I have Nahida right here as well. So these were done on Procreate for the most part. So I'm only going to be showing you guys the time lapse portion. Um, as I didn't film the actual drawing portion portion because I was kind of like out and about thinking about the designs. So yeah. 
this is the one I did for Nahida. I made sure to keep things a little bit more simple for hers as well, keeping things a little bit symmetrical. Um, and I decided to do the liner and color filling all, like all in Procreate. But for the one of Masaki, because I was a little bit of unsure about how I wanted to do the colors, I decided to take it into Clip Studio Paint so I could fudge around with the colors along with the outlines. So that is what I have here. So I have the sketch kind of imported. I believe I did a little bit of li uh, liquefying for the character for Masaki. And then I'm going in with fairly uh, like no pressure kind of sensitivity, fairly even line strokes for the most part. Just because I, I whenever I time like I think about enamel pins, I wanted to make it as simple as possible, but I realized the amount of um, freedom you get a little bit, especially from GSJJ's uh, manufacturing. I don't feel limited about the colors or like the line quality and stuff because they do a really good job of making sure that these are quite accurate. I'll leave some pictures as well, um, probably during while this stuff is going so you guys can see kind of like the proofs that they sent me. Um, showing the color choices that they make because you have to use Pantone colors Which is also good if you work probably in CMYK so that you can work in a Colors that can be printed as well because RGB colors are just screen colors and screen kind of has like an infinite amount of colors rather than CMYK which is a lot more limited so if you can I believe you should work in CMYK so that you'll know what things could look like a little bit more accurately when printed out um, but because I believe these are filled in with I don't know what exactly is goes into a hard enamel pin I know sometimes they do screen printing on top which I know would require you to refer to the Pantone colors I know whenever I did screen printing in uni we always had to refer to something similar like that to make sure our color mixing and stuff were a little bit more accurate um, but yeah so I made sure to keep everything quite clean and I made sure that I didn't like I didn't add any unnecessary shadows or highlights or anything because like I said I wanted to make sure that these pins were fairly simple easy to read but also just because I was used to always looking at a website and it telling me that you're limited to four colors so it's like I would think about a color scheme that would work for Masaki that might like it could kind of fit in that four color range and I kind of have to sacrifice one color to the skin tone so yeah that's what that kind of like what my brain was thinking when I was making this even though I do think that the flexibility of GSJJ is quite nice especially because they have such a low minimum quantity I don't think you will have to be really scared of making like a mistake right away as well as like how responsive their their team is because I love that they give you a proof back and they give you the Pantone colors and like their suggestion on the plating color along with the color scheme is really nice because it can kind of gives you another insight and input from another person and I believe because they're part of that field I believe in their expertise so yeah this is what I have from Masaki and for the most part I had no problems with um kind of like the transitioning my drawing to the enamel pin process because of how helpful the staff was so i highly recommend checking out gsjj if you guys would like to i believe that their website's very easy to navigate the staff's very friendly and very helpful to make sure that your product comes out the way you want and also the product quality is very much well done like i had very minimum errors with mine and the color accuracy is really beautiful and this like the finish of everything is just super well done with quality wise so yeah definitely recommend you guys checking out um gsjj if you're interested in making enamel pins um plus if you're looking for patches or stickers so yeah do like do check out the links down below if you're interested and i'll talk to you guys next time in the next video bye